tomorrowpictures.tv For many, Facebook is a very good tool to interact with those with similar interests, to organize or keep in touch with family members or friends, but for a lot of people, Facebook is a never-ending slog of narcissism, self-aggrandizement, and one-upmanship. And many people would like to unplug but just can't seem to. But for those of you that struggle getting off Facebook, there's a new and novel technique. Drop acid with your breakfast. And I'm being serious. According to famed psychedelics researcher Dr. James Fadiman, who worked with LSD until it was banned in the 1960s, found that he gave up Facebook after he began to take tiny doses of LSD for breakfast. He said of ingesting small doses of LSD, people do it, and they're eating better, sleeping better, they're often returning to exercise or yoga or meditation. It's as if messages are being passed through the body more easily. And a growing movement of people are now microdosing LSD in the morning. That is taking 10 to 15 micrograms instead of the larger doses used for drug trips, and claim that it can cure both anxiety and insomnia. LSD is making a comeback and is seemingly everywhere these days. But more on microdosing in a minute. So, this is literally your brain on LSD. For the first time, scientists have scanned the brains of people tripping on LSD and found the drug frees your mind by making it less compartmentalized and in a way similar to that of a baby. The research carried out at Imperial College London on the brains of 20 volunteers who were scanned while they were high on acid came to some pretty interesting conclusions. While normally the brain works on independent networks performing separate functions such as vision, movement and hearing, under LSD, the separateness of these networks breaks down, leading to a more unified system. In many ways, the brain in the LSD state resembles the state our brains were in when we were infants, free and unconstrained. This also makes sense when we consider the hyper-emotional and imaginative nature of an infant's mind. More fascinating still, however, is that this study has shown that LSD really does free the mind. It sparks connections in areas of the brain that normally do not communicate. The absolute amazing images show that virtually every part of the brain is active during an LSD trip. It simply lights up your brain, allowing users to experience a dreamlike state of vision normally only found while one is asleep. LSD appears to break down barriers and allows vision, movement, and hearing to blur together, stimulating ideas that probably wouldn't happen in a normal state. There are a lot of people that sing the praises of LSD and its transformative effect for the better on their lives and psyche. Some you wouldn't have guessed. Steve Jobs, who stated, LSD was one of the two or three most important things I ever did in my life, was not shy about his affinity for LSD and was known to ask potential Apple employees if they had ever done LSD during interviews. Psychedelics had a major impact on the work of famous author Aldous Huxley. A profound experience with LSD inspired him to write one of his most famous pieces, The Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell. Ironically, Huxley himself took LSD while on his deathbed. The classic Hollywood leading man, Cary Grant, used repeated LSD with his therapist and credited it with bringing him much happiness in life. The famous molecular biologist, Francis Crick, told his close friend, Dick Kemp, that he had actually perceived the double helix shape while on LSD and that LSD use was common among Cambridge academics at the time. Many of them used it in small amounts as a thinking tool, according to Kemp. And most interestingly to me personally, because of my childhood affinity to the trilogy, was Oscar-winning animator Phil Tippett and his revelation that he took a lot of LSD while working on Star Wars The Return of the Jedi. 
The myths surrounding LSD and the gluttonous and degenerate manner it was abused in the 1960s makes it difficult for lawmakers to accept it as a psychiatric drug like Prozac or Zoloft. But this was actually the intended use from the start. Albert Hoffman, upon discovering the drug in 1943, immediately set about looking for psychiatric applications. And that impulse remains strong in the scientific community. Over 1,000 academic research papers on the effects of LSD were published before the Summer of Love rebranded acid as a way to rebel against reality. Thus, LSD escaped the laboratory and got into the hands of the hippies in the 1960s and the government moved in and banned it outright in 1967 and all above board, at least, scientific research into the amazing potential that LSD offers ceased. A book I read a few years ago deals a lot with the idea of psychedelics and the evolution of our species. In his book Supernatural, Graham Hancock explains that less than 50,000 years ago, mankind had no art, no religion, no sophisticated symbolism, no innovative thinking. Then, in a dramatic and electrifying change, described by scientists as the greatest riddle in human history, all of the skills and qualities that we value most, highly in ourselves, appeared already fully formed, as though bestowed on us by hidden powers. He argues that through the use of psychedelics, for his purposes ayahuasca and mescaline, that shamans of the past, but lay folks of today, are able to communicate with the supernatural, and that the possibility that such hallucinations are in fact real perceptions of other dimensions. More importantly, he posits the question that perhaps human evolution is not just a blind, meaningless process that Darwin identified, but something else, something more purposive and intelligent that we've barely even begun to understand. And in line with this presentation, Hancock's assertion that the use of psychedelics may open a door and allow for the opportunity to interact with other realms of consciousness, as well as deeply with our own, seems plausible, at least to me. The book is 848 pages with notes, so obviously I can't explain everything here in this video, but Hancock's detective work on the human story and prehistory and our explosive transformation is worth a read, even if you disagree with his premise. When he published his life's work, The Psychedelic Explorer's Guide, pioneering psychedelic researcher Dr. James Fadiman had amassed an amazing compendium of hallucinogenic lore as well as a user's manual for would-be psychonauts. The book examined the primary uses for psychedelics such as spiritual enlightenment at higher doses and improvements in creativity at smaller ones. It also addressed a lesser known but increasingly popular phenomenon, microdosing. Microdosing refers to taking extremely small doses of psychedelics, so small that the effects usually associated with such drugs are not evident or are sub-perceptual while going about one's daily activities. And those that practice microdosing may surprise you, from extreme athletes to senior businessmen to tech workers in Silicon Valley, and they are all claiming serious benefits from doing so. For comparison, he makes clear to have a trip or a transcendental experience on LSD, a dose of 400 micrograms or more is called for. To explore your inner self, take 200 micrograms. For creative problem solving, try 100 micrograms. But for microdosing, take only 10 to 15 micrograms. Similar microdoses for other psychedelics would include 0.2 to 0.5 grams of dried mushrooms, about one-fifth the normal dose, or about 50 to 75 micrograms of mescaline. Because LSD research remains banned, he began to study microdosing in 2010, using a network of volunteers who self-administered and reported to him the results. The results were, in fact, very interesting in that, at the end of the day, they say, that was a really good day. You know, the kind of day when things kind of work. You're doing a task that you normally couldn't stand for two hours, but you do it for three or four. You eat properly. Maybe you do one more set of reps. Just a good day. That seems to be what we're discovering. Study participants functioned normally in their work and relationships, Fadiman said, but with increased focus, emotional clarity, and creativity. One physician reported that microdosing put him in touch with a deep 
place of ease and beauty. A singer reported being better able to hear and channel music. These results are not yet peer-reviewed, but they are suggestive. And from a wide variety of sources and writers, microdosing is said to improve cognitive functioning, emotional balance, and physical stamina, as well as being extremely beneficial to improve one's meditation practices. And like I said, this new social phenomenon is also being experimented with by groups of people you would never have guessed. According to Rolling Stone, as well as industry insider and entrepreneur Tim Ferriss, there is a new trend within Silicon Valley with regards to microdosing and its ability to help creativity and help people solve problems, make more sales, and even code faster. Other experienced microdosing users say it can be very effective in dealing with our so-called psychic garbage, as the need to resolve repressed feelings is how one clears his inner being and can bring new understanding of one's personality dynamics. Advocates, in fact, expound that the potential to improve cognitive functioning, body awareness, and spiritual evolution with microdose of psychedelics are limitless. Even more importantly, psychedelic drugs could prove to be highly effective treatments for depression and alcoholism, according to scientists who have obtained the first brain scans of people under the influence of LSD, as touched on previously in this presentation. Early results from the trial involving 20 people are said to be very promising and add to existing evidence that psychoactive drugs could help reverse entrenched patterns of addictive or negative thinking. These results are also mirrored by other recent peer-reviewed studies. However, Professor David Knapp, who led the study together with Amanda Fielding of the Beckley Foundation, warned that patients are missing out on the potential benefits of such treatments due to prohibitive regulations on research into recreational drugs. Speaking at a briefing in London, the government's former chief drugs advisor said the restrictions amounted to the worst censorship in the history of science. The mystery of consciousness is probably the greatest of all, but what we are, who we are, and why we are is little understood. From all of the personal anecdotes as well as the scientific research, both pre-prohibition to the very recent peer-reviewed studies, all point to a substance that not only brings a profound sense of insight, creativity, and oneness with the universe, but also at the same time has been shown to be of help to people with significant issues such as depression and addiction. And personally, I can vouch for the very real transformative effect that LSD can have. It can help one gain a higher sense of the entangled nature of ideas as well as the association and interconnected nature of this reality we all share, as well as the magic that is this life. In my own immediate circle, it cured those I know of depression as well as nicotine addiction. Wanting to explore your own consciousness should not be closeted or a hushed topic, nor should it be a crime. While I don't deny the need to keep most recreational drugs like heroin illegal, but having said that, though, being denied the right by the state to explore your own as well as other states of consciousness with psychedelics is overreach. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. The channel will be updated regularly. to wake up. Wake up to Tang. Tang, the happy new breakfast drink you don't squeeze, unfreeze, or refrigerate. Yet it gives your family more of the vitamin C everyone needs every day. In fact, Tang gives you more vitamin C than the finest orange juice, fresh or frozen. More vitamin A, too. And Tang is so much easier to fix. Watch. Ice cold water in a juice glass, plus one rounded tablespoon of Tang. Stir, and instantly you have delicious Tang. Everyone loves its sunny, wide-awake flavor. Tang tastes fresh because you make it fresh each morning. You get more flavor plus more vitamin C and A than even the freshest orange juice. Look for the jar with the orange-colored cap at your grocer's now. And every morning, wake up to Tang. T-A-N-G.